So the vector cross product is another operation that we can do given two vectors. So for example here, A cross B will give you a resultant vector. So the result of cross product is actually a vector, not a scalar, which is why we have our magnitude part here and our direction part here. So let's go through how the magnitude came about first. In its essence, the magnitude of vector cross product is just the area of the parallelogram formed by both vectors. Okay? So for example, in A cross B, if I draw a parallelogram to complete this, okay, we can see that we can find the area of this parallelogram by multiplying this line, which is the magnitude of our vector A, we multiply that by this segment over here. Now, if you notice, I just made a right triangle where the right angle is here. And so if we do our sine theta is equal to the opposite side over hypotenuse, we see that our hypotenuse is actually the magnitude of vector B over here. And so we can transpose that and take that B sine theta is equal to this opposite side that we're interested in. And so we can put this over here and see that the area of our parallelogram is exactly the cross product, which is a, b, sine theta. And that's where the magnitude comes from. Okay, so that's where the magnitude came from. But how about the direction? So what does this n hat stand for? The n hat is actually just the normal unit vector. Okay. Now when I say normal, it means perpendicular, which means our resultant vector is perpendicular to both this a vector and the b vector. Okay? So it's either pointing out of the page like this or into the page like this. So how do you know which one of the two it's actually pointing in? Well, for this, we can use our right-hand rule. So you can refer to this drawing over here. But how I like to think about it is I karate chop the first vector in our cross product. So, okay. so I karate chop this a vector then I curl my palm in the direction of this theta going to my second vector, which is b. Now I see that my thumb is pointing out of the page. And so in this case, where a cross b, the resultant vector is pointing out of the page. Before we move on to mathematically taking the cross product of two vectors, here are some properties that you need to take note of. So first, parallel vectors cross product is zero. So if you can imagine, if A was right on top of B, based on our definition of magnitude, it doesn't make a parallelogram. So the area of the parallelogram that A and B make are zero. And so that's why this property number one is true. Secondly, it's not commutative. So what does this mean? A cross B is definitely not equal to B cross A in most cases. Why is that? For example, we can take a look at our example here. If I do B cross A and I do right-hand rule, I karate chop B, then I curl my hand going to A by passing through theta, right? And so you'll find that my thumb is actually pointing into the page. And so A cross B is not B cross A. So now that we kind of get where cross product comes from, let's try solving for cross product. Okay. So this will most likely be the most common question in your exams, where you'll need to find the cross product of two different vectors. In this case, let's try it on a three-dimensional vector. So how do we do this? What I like to do is first put this into a matrix. Okay. So here, let's say our A cross B results in a vector C. So let's write out C over here, and then let's make our matrix. So we start by writing i, j, and k on top, okay? And then for our missing row here, which is our second row, let's put in the components of our first vector. So let's do 2 because that corresponds to i, and 3 because that corresponds to j, and 2. And then for our last row, let's put in the components of our second vector, which is b. So let's put in 1, 2, and 4. Okay, now how I like to do this is I pick the target, okay? So let's say my target is I right now. I will strike through I vertically and horizontally, okay? Now we end up with four numbers over here. So our first term will be these two numbers over here multiplied with each other. So that's three times four minus these two numbers over here multiplied with each other, which is two times two. 
And then we end our first term with our target. And again, our target was i hat, right? So let's end this with i hat. Okay, for 3D vectors, the second term will always start with a negative. So let's right off the bat put a negative here. Okay, now our target now is j. So let's vertically strike through j and horizontally strike through j. Okay, and we get another four numbers. So our term will be these two numbers multiplied by each other minus these two numbers multiplied by each other. And then we end it again with our target. So let's put j. And now to finish off, let's pick k as our target. So we horizontally strike through, vertically strike through. And then for our third term, it starts with a plus. Then we do 2 times 2 like earlier minus 1 times 3 like this, 1 times 3, and we end it off with a K. Now remember, we have letters in our answers like this with the hats on top because our answer, which is our resultant, should always be a vector since we're doing cross product. Okay, So what does this end up with? We end up here with 12 minus 4 I okay, minus 8 minus 2 j plus 4 minus 3 k. And so our final answer is 8i minus 6j plus 1k. And so this is our resultant vector okay, from doing a cross b. Hopefully now you kind of understand the cross product a little bit better and you know how to solve 3D vector cross product.